Sit, Coco, sit. Good dog. Hey everyone, it's thrifting time. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at two thrift stores that are in the same shopping center, which is something I've never seen. There's the Savers that we saw, and then all the way at the end there is a Goodwill thrift store. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Savers first. I don't think I've ever shown a Savers store in an episode of Thrifting Time before. They're not much different than the local Goodwills around here, there's just not nearly as many of them. Savers is a for-profit thrift store, and the way they get their inventory is they purchase items in bulk from smaller charities that collect stuff for donation. They also accept donated items at their stores, but I wonder how many people realize they're donating to a for-profit thrift store. Of course, I had to take a look at what video games they had first, and surprisingly, we found some NES games. Here's California games, and $6 is not a horrible price for this, but I could probably find it for a few dollars cheaper at a convention. I have to say though, I, I really appreciate that they have all the video games separated from all the other DVDs and CDs. Of course they've got their obligatory Xbox and Xbox 360 sports games. There's a copy of Link's Crossbow Training and some sort of Monster High game for the Nintendo DS, not anything I'm interested in. And there was a copy of Excite Bike. I already have this game so I didn't need that one, but this one's in really great shape. There's a PS1 game, uh, Bugs Life. Again, not a game that I need, but kind of interesting to see. And it looks like there is one more NES game behind all of these discs. There it is. Trying to make sure all that stuff doesn't fall over. Here's a copy of Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, and this is a game I don't have. And it looks like they're just kind of flat pricing all of their NES games at $5.99. Uh, the price tag wasn't on this game, it was on the uh, little case there, the little slip cover. But this one I'm going to go ahead and grab, that's a really good price for that game, and I can probably get m the marker off, at least most of it. I've also got a bunch of Wii games in here, and I just read the Wii turned 15 years old, so I guess those are officially retro games now? Ugh, that makes me feel old. And speaking of old, here is Mr. Modem's Internet Guide for Seniors. I always get a good laugh at books like this. Apparently this book can help you get connected and start surfing right away. Does anybody say that anymore, surfing the web? Of course I had to check out the copyright date in this book and it is 1999. So that would explain the whole surfing the web thing. And also this book is autographed by Mr. Modem himself. I can't believe uh, Carolyn and Wynn gave this autographed copy of this gem away. Now this tub caught my eye because VHS tapes, and it looks like they were just selling this whole tub of VHS tapes as one lot. And there were some interesting movies in here, including a copy of Problem Child, that's one of those movies that I kind of forget about until something reminds me that it exists again. You've got The Godfather. There's all kinds of interesting stuff in there. Steel Magnolias, Parenthood. Some of them in there look like they were still factory sealed also. I do enjoy VHS tapes, but none of these are weird enough for me. This clock caught my eye until I realized it was a cheap, modern reproduction. And then I saw this air horn, that's one of the odder things that I've seen at Goodwill. And then I saw this very, very heavy clock, which I thought was going to have a picture of a church or Jesus on it or something. But then I noticed it says that it was to Santa, but apparently it was a Santa that worked at the United States Air Force Occupational Measurement Center at Randolph Air Force Base in Texas. That's a weird thing to find just randomly donated. I can't believe how heavy it was. I feel like these old Dell flat screen monitors are starting to pile up like Wii Fit boards at thrift stores. I, I see them a lot now. Surprisingly, this place only had one VCR though. This one's from Hitachi and I actually kind of like the look of this one. It's very late 80s. I don't need another VCR, but that one's pretty neat. Now here's something I don't see at all anymore. This is a mail station from Earthlink. These came out in the late 90s, I believe, and they were just like little email appliances. You could, you know, connect to the internet, check your email, and do a couple of other things. I love finding things like this because it reminds me of that early internet era. Definitely wouldn't need anything like this today. I mean, you can check your email on your refrigerator if you have the right one. And here's a neat little keyboard. I had one similar to this when I was a kid. I think it was a Yamaha one. This is a Yamaha Pro Sound PSS 130. And that is not a bad price for this because I looked and on eBay they go for about $50 shipped. 
and this one looks to be in really good shape. If it was $10, I might have considered picking it up just to play with. Now this ugly end table thing kind of caught my eye because you can see down here there's little candle lamps built in there. This thing is just terrible. They don't make furniture like this anymore, thankfully. But once again, it's a thing in here that I'm really surprised in how good of condition it's in. Here's a quick look in their glass jewelry case and yeah, there's two video games there, but that other box that's wrapped there, that's a factory sealed copy of Purple Rain on Betamax. Now that is a relic. And speaking of relics, here's one from my childhood. I had a friend who had this exact cap gun. I remember it specifically. This is a Rogun Blazer from Mattel from 1992. Mattel actually made these all the way back in the 80s, but they were GoBots themed then. I'm guessing by 1992, the GoBots licensing didn't mean anything anymore. But what this is, is it's kind of like a transformer. So it's a cap gun rifle, but it transforms into a big robot, although it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it to do that. It took me a minute to remember how all the different switches and things worked, but as you can see, you fold the arms down there and then you spin the head around and now you've got a robot. This one was kind of loose though and didn't want to stand up. But you get the idea. And also, it took me a minute to figure out how to open up this part, but if you open up the back, you can see where the caps go in. Right there, you can put two reels of those old school caps for cap guns. Stuff like this is why I love going to thrift stores. I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid, and I probably never would have thought about it again unless I saw it here at a thrift store. Now let's move on to the Goodwill location that's in the same shopping center. I've got to figure out which one of these stores opened first. Now over here in the video games, there wasn't anything nearly as interesting as what we found at the Savers. It's really just all sports games for the PS2 and Xbox 360, several copies of Wii Fit, and really nothing else worth looking at. But right next to the video games, there was something worth looking at. This is a really nice camcorder from JVC. This thing looks almost brand new. The only thing it's missing is the battery pack on the back, but otherwise it looks fantastic. I actually have been looking for a really nice VHS camcorder, but this one is newer than what I'm looking for. I want one that uses full-size VHS tapes. But yeah, all that's missing is the battery pack on the back, and I believe those are universal. I think you can still buy those battery packs. That is really cool. Whenever I'm at Goodwill or any thrift store, I always make sure to flip through the records in case there's some laser discs mixed in there, and there was at this location. However, they were all karaoke laser discs, but it's still always really interesting to find these. You can see the little laser disc logo down there in the bottom, and if you're not familiar with what a laser disc looks like, it looks like a giant CD, but it plays video on a laser disc player. I had a Laserdisc player up until a few years ago when I got rid of it because it was taking up too much space. They are really big. But sometimes I kind of regret getting rid of it. And whenever I find Laserdiscs at a thrift store, that means there could be a chance that there's a Laserdisc player around here somewhere. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case though. I looked all through the electronics and everything and there wasn't any Laserdisc player. If I did have a player though, I may have bought one or two of these discs just to pop them in and laugh at them. And when I say bought, it would have been more like rented them because I would have paid a few dollars to buy them and then immediately drop them back off at Goodwill probably. And over here in the toy section of all places is a copy of Qbert, a big box PC game. I didn't know there was a later version of Qbert for Windows 95 slash Windows 98. I probably would have bought this if the box was in better condition. Unfortunately, the box was pretty smashed on one side. I am kind of a snob when it comes to box condition on my big box PC games. We can take a look at the uh, beefy system requirements here required to run it and yeah I'm pretty sure I've got a computer laying around here somewhere that could have run this. This caught my eye over in the toy area because I immediately recognized it as Lisa Frank stuff. At first I thought it was going to be like really old, you know, new old stock, but this is actually a fairly new package. There's even a QR code on the back. I didn't know they still made Lisa Frank stuff like this. It's too bad you can't really find Trapper Keepers anymore to go along with this stuff. Now this jumped out at me over in the electronics section. At first I thought it was an old PC joystick, but then I got to looking at it, 
And I noticed that each of the buttons were labeled with things like missiles and machine gun. And when I started flipping it around, it doesn't look there's anywhere to actually hook this up to a PC or anything. I think this is just a sound effect box that's shaped like a joystick. That was kind of disappointing. I would have so much rather have found an old PC joystick. Over in the art section, Mark found a picture that he really liked. This is a painting titled Meandering Minstrels, and it's actually individually numbered, number 24 out of 50. And it was painted by Aaron Wetzel in 2017. So if you're Aaron Wetzel, Mark purchased your painting. That is pretty cool. I like that too. I think Mark made a good pick here. And we'll wrap up our tour with ye old abandoned Starbucks cup. These really are a fixture at Goodwill stores. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of Thrifting Time. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this episode of Thrifting Time. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're looking for more thrifting videos, you can take a look at that handy dandy playlist I've put there of all of the Thrifting Time episodes. And lastly, make sure to follow me at the social media links down there, because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.